Dean Zalatavia, distinguished faculty, parents, family, friends, streamers. Are you ready to get this party started? I think first and foremost, we need to recognize that it's not just the people who are in their fine garbs today, it's every one of you that's graduating as well. You're graduating from people who didn't do their chores, people who were always behind their computer, people who are always going off because they have another project to do, disrupting everybody's thing in order to help them achieve their goals. So I think all of you potential graduates, we're not done yet, ought to give a big round of applause to the people on either side of you. In addition, I think that all too often we forget about the faculty and I want to give them three cheers, but I'm going to show you how we'd like to do it. I'm going to raise my hand like this, and I need everybody here to just yell, Met. Can we practice one time? That was poor. So when I do it the next time, we're going to do it, and I'm going to do this three times to make the three cheers that we need. You're right, MET is the College of Opportunity. Yes, MET is the College of Second Chances. MET is the College of those of serious purpose, self-discipline, determination, and grit. During my years as a MET student, the classes were night school on the BU campus drag in and drag out. There was no such thing as online. Our tech was COBOL and punch cards. But we felt as though we got a real 3D education, as in no dorms, no dates, no drinking. <laughs> MET is clearly the best of BU. I love it, I support it, and I want you to be prepared to be generous because the next time you hear from MET, it will be the annual appeal. I've been actively involved, as you heard, in one way or another for 56 years. I am the ultimate booster. My license plate is BU1. My boat registration is BU1. And I have a nice place over in the Charles River to keep me involved if I need something to paint. I hope that in the future, you'll think of ways that you can participate in life at BU as well, because it is truly rewarding. By now, you might guess that I am older than most of the people who are here. And so I want to peg it for you. I'm older than Trump and younger than Biden, but, but still in my right mind. Some of you probably saw my photo on all the promo things here, and I don't want any grief because that is not my high school picture. That is honestly an example of what happens when you say to chat GPT, give me a little facelift. <laughs> I used to be called CEO and chairman, and now I wear the title former. Former of this, former of that. I live in the land of was with dignity and appreciation. And I do love the opportunity to share my life's experiences with students, young people, and actually anybody who will listen. There is one bit of advice that caught my attention this time, and it seems to be given at every commencement. Live every day like it's your last. I paid particular attention to that this year because sooner or later I think they're gonna be right. What I'm going to share with you today is how I prepared to get lucky. It's a very personal and private account 
of my youth. So I hope you'll keep it to yourself because my grandkids still don't think I was ever young. Starting at about age 10, I think I may have been the victim of summer child labor abuse. My parents owned a guest house on the Cape and every day I was required to help change and make beds, empty trash, deliver water, collect dirty towels, and got no pay. This went on for four years. And finally, by telling a little lie that I was 16, I got my first real paying job as a dishwasher. And I must have been good at it because I moved from pots and pans to fine china in one month. I did not realize how important those experiences would be to me later in life. I still make our bed every day, and I clean up the kitchen in a flash, and my wife loves it. And I think her friends are envious. And I might be a little bit famous around in Florida because I notice many win widows who wave and wink at me. <laughs> Regardless of your age or your circumstances, completing Little but important daily routines creates a quiet sense of accomplishment and rewards you for action. From ages 14 to 18, I worked after school every day and on Saturdays, pumping gas, chatting with customers, washing cars, listening to customers, changing tires, running parts, complaining about customers, and ultimately keeping daily books for our business. I loved it. I loved everything about it, and it became even more important in later life. It starts really with understanding hard work, and I'm talking about the physical, nasty, dirty jobs that keep our world moving every day. Those are the unseen folks, and we deserve and need to recognize and appreciate them. Then there are the numbers. Without command of your finances, life will be a constant stress and a credit nightmare that will follow you like a ghost. We all know that people make the world go round and they often turn it upside down. The more you understand what motivates people, the more success that you will have in every aspect of your life. The more respect you give people, the more you will receive yourself. But then recognize that the real world is also full of complaints, criticism, dissatisfaction, disagreement coming from those very same people. But remember this, no phone call, no email, no FaceTime or Zoom can replace personal face-to-face -face communication, especially to resolve difficulties or to make apologies. When I was a senior in high school, and please remember, this is still kind of sensitive, private stuff, no posting, my guidance counselor told my parents that it would be senseless waste of money for me to apply to college. In spite of his opinion, I applied to junior college and went anyway. After one semester, I dropped out. Evidently, I didn't relate well to grades. This was an important lesson because he was right. Admitting to yourself that you're wrong is a rare and important life skill. In addition, dealing with failure is a big part of earning success. I now see failure as just a delay or an inconvenience. In fact, failure be builds determination and determination gets the job done. All the same, I really would like to have had the guidance counselor here today. A month later, at 19, I packed my bag, said my goodbyes, joined the U.S. Air Force, ignoring what had become the Vietnam War. This was a life-changing decision. And there are times in life when a good kick in the pants or a bucket of ice water 
is needed to trigger either a snap out of it or a snap into it. For me, it was the latter. Losing your hair to a set of clippers, giving up your civilian clothes, your possessions, and your power of choice was a cold water moment for me. Ceding control of your life to others or standing in uniform formation, waiting for the next command makes you feel powerless and anonymous. In those circumstances, you have to ask yourself, who am I? In time, you realize it's your character, it's your values, it's your skills, it's your beliefs, it's your attitude, your personality, and your innermost thoughts that really define who you are. Once you know who you are, don't compromise who you are just to get ahead. Within weeks, I became a platoon leader and qualified for a special tech school to study telecommunications and computer-based cryptography. By the way, if you wanted to know how I became a platoon leader, I was the only one of 23 young men who knew how to make a bed. <laughs> 12 months later, I had a top secret clearance. And like some people today, I could keep a secret. I was assigned to a small air station in Taipei, Taiwan, maintaining communication links to Vietnam. And for sure, that was better than being there. So there I was, leaving, living in a hostel, in, uh, a hostel in uh, downtown Ta Taipei, with at least a million people who did not speak English and had never seen a six foot one white American. I was stared at, pointed at, talked about, laughed at, and generally was the source of curiosity and entertainment every time I got on a bus. It was a great lesson. Being a minority of any kind is not easy. It's lonely. You feel apprehensive and insecure every day. My Asian hosts, however, did not discriminate. I learned quickly that giving respect get your respect, and as human beings, we are codependent. Treat people well to be treated well. It works everywhere I've been. Sixteen months later, I was ordered to Otis Air Force Base on Cape Cod, 20 miles from where I made those beds and washed those pots and pans, and good fate befell me. BU Met had set up a remote campus with part-time degree programs for returning Vietnam vets and military families, thanks to the GI Bill. And I was all in, and so it began. Nine years later, in 1971, married with four children, a job as a systems analyst, and selling real estate part-time, I earned my BS degree. Without really knowing it, I had prepared to get lucky. Moving on, I can tell you building a business is both exhilarating and exhausting. You live with it day and night, through good and bad, success and failure, and in the end you discover one thing. The greatest rewards are really the people you were with, not the profits. What was clear and open, clear and open road to success for me in the 1970s and 80s had become a mere sidewalk to success in the 90s and 2000s. Technology and the internet set new rules of commerce, social communication, as well as a different platform for business. Cheaper, faster, easier, and better drove major brands out of business. Disintermediation and roll-ups won the hearts of minds and investors and their money. Now, you, as graduates of today, face the greatest challenges yet. It seems to me that the road to success that became a sidewalk is now becoming a tight road to success. You'll face political extremes, economic uncertainty, changing social order, climate change, mob judgment, cyber wars, and the greatest opportunity and perhaps the greatest threat to our world, artificial intelligence. Chat. GPT, Palm 2, and BARD are just the beginning. You must be especially aware and be in control of where, when, and how AI is used. 
for us to have a future at all. And the best advice I can give you in that regard is to rely on the who you are, your common sense, and your sense of purpose as your safety net. I built my success on a constant affirmation, honesty, integrity, and fairness. I learned that personal balance with true honesty and loving support is really found at home with family. And that my faith and my subconscious were reliable allies in finding my power of purpose. I'd like to conclude today by using the words that I used the first meeting I ran as chairman of Boston University. Give us the grace and determination to persevere. Give us heart, courage, humor, and a quiet mind. Let us hold our family close, spare our friends, and soften our enemies. Give us the strength to encounter that which is to come, that we may be brave in peril, constant in tribulation, and temperate in wrath. And in every change of fate and fortune, let us hold dear the values and traditions of Boston University, learning, virtue, piety. I'm so glad I met you.